strangers of the interweb. It is I, Pam. Welcome to Pam's Crafty Corner. Today is Thursday, I think, <laughs> February 20th. Um, I have been away for a while. I haven't done a video since um, earlier in January. I've got a lot of stuff to show you, but a limited amount of time in which to show it to you in because I have just gotten out of the shower and gotten ready for work. I'm working night shift tonight and I just want to record this before I go to work because if I don't, um, it's not going to get done for another week. And that's what's happened to me the last couple of weeks. I was like, yeah, I'll do that on my days off. And then I ran into issues and time. And anyway, I have a little bit of time now. So we're going to do this now. Um, welcome back for anyone who is a regular uh, viewer. And if you're new to my channel, um, welcome. This is my channel all about my crafting. Um, the majority of which is um, cross-stitch with some uh, knitting or crochet thrown in and a few other crafts along the way. But today it's mostly going to be about cross-stitch and a little bit of knitting. So, um, let's get started. For cross-stitch, I did a lot in this last month. I have been, since the beginning of January, I've been steadily working on Jay's Folk Witch project. And I've been using Pattern Keeper, and I love it. I really, really love it. Um, it sped up my stitching, not my actual, I guess, amount of stitches that I get done, say, you know, per hour, if you will. But what it's done is it's taken the guesswork out of where I have to put my stitches. Because I typically stitch color by color, page by page. So cross-country stitching within a page. And before, I was having to take a highlighter and highlight whatever color I was doing every instance that it occurred on the page. And then as I was stitching them, uh, mark them off with a darker highlighter to show that I had them completed. So all of that, though, is already done for me because Pattern Keeper searches for the symbol. It shows me everywhere it goes. I just pick up my needle and get right to stitching. So with that said, I actually ended up with two page finishes on this piece. I'll try and insert a picture of where it was back in January when you saw it last. And this is it now. I'm not going to, well actually yeah, I will. I'll take it off the hoop. I've been stitching on my hoop only because um, it's easy for me and I can just work on it um, wherever I am in the house. And I haven't got to worry about dragging my stand around. And I've also, um, my shoulder issue has improved a great deal since I stopped using my stand. And I think it's because I'm sitting back more in my chair and holding it in my hand and stitching it that way versus um, sitting up or leaning and reaching underneath. Like this movement seems to do something in my lower shoulder. Anyway. So this is Folk Witch. Ta-da! She still has no head, but moving right along, I finished, um, I finished the page that was here, I believe. And maybe this one up here, I'm not sure. And now I've almost completed, this is another page end right here. So this page, as you can see, is almost done. And then this is a half page on the end. So I'm really moving along on this piece. There you go. So once I get this page finished down here, I'm actually going to move up now and do a row of pages across the top. And I think that's... I think that there's only one row of pages across the top. I could be wrong. And then I will move down 
And as you can see, that's where the bottom of the piece is. So there's only like a page and a bit um, in the length to do. There's like a page and a bit. So really, really pleased with my progress on this piece. If I keep going on this um, as I've been doing, I should have no trouble getting this done before the end of the year. Fingers crossed. <laughs> So that is Folk Witch by Gecko Rouge. So yeah, I had a page finish on um, the 9th of January. Then I had another page finished on the 1st of February. So there you go. The next thing I worked on for the entire month of January, just on um, at work, like I would take it to my... Um, I would work on it on my days that I was working is my tapestry sampler by Pat Rogers again I'll try and insert a picture of where it was the last time you saw it and this is it now it's uh, come along a little ways I worked more on this top border here I did the C and the J and the K, I believe, if memory serves me. So there you go. That is the Tapestry Sampler by Pat Rogers. I'm stitching this one on an old, as you can see, I had started a Christmas ornament on it a long time ago and never finished it. I'm going to rip that out or it just, it won't be seen when the piece is um framed anyway i don't know it's an old old piece of 18 count like oatmeal ada and i just decided to reuse it look at where it's stuck to the side of my project so that's that one i love the colors in this and um that might actually end up being a finish for me this year as well i don't know but i seem to be getting pretty decent progress on it the other piece, another piece that I've worked on this month is my Death by Cross Stitch. Uh, we all know it. We all love it. And this is where I am. With the Q-snap on there still, but you can see the top portion. So now I've worked down to this bottom section. And the lighting in here is not real great today because it's dark outside. It's like quarter after six here in the evening. So it's uh, already dark and I just have the dining room light. It's, which is not great for this sort of thing, but we're just going to have to make do. So here you go. This is my Death by Cross Stitch. I'm doing it in DMC 939 and I'm stitching it on 25 count antique white Lugana. And I'm stitching this one over one. So the stitches are pretty tiny. But I really, really enjoy working on this piece. I'm still enjoying it a lot. I tend to work on this on Fridays for Friday Off the Grid. Um, there is a Facebook group, um, Friday Off the Grid, um, where we get, you know, you get together every Friday pick a project and sit down and try to dedicate like six hours of stitching time to a piece from like, I think it's like from six in the evening to, to midnight or whatever you can do. Um, you know, there's no cross stitch police. So it's whatever you can do. I tend to, if I'm off on that Friday, <clears throat> sorry, if I'm off work on a Friday, I tend to just pick it up right from, you know, when I get my morning coffee, get a few stitches in do what I have to do for the day, and then go back to it at some point in the afternoon or evening and stitch on it again. So that is my Death by Cross Stitch. It's coming along nicely. I can't see this being finished by the end of the year. I really don't, um, but we'll see what happens with it. I'll lay that over there. Now, so I also had a finish 
prior to Christmas on my Dark 13 stitching piece. And I wanted to start another one for this year. So I don't think I showed this in my last video. I may have, but I don't think so. It's definitely on my Instagram account though. So this is just a black and white copy of the chart that I printed off. This is from The Little Stitcher on Etsy. It's called Arsenic and Old Lace. I'll try and insert a better picture of what that's supposed to look like. But it's based on the um, old movie, Arsenic and Old Lace, um, with, um, oh my gosh, his name escapes me. Is it Cary Grant? I think it's Cary Grant. Anyway. Uh, I love that movie. I think it's I think it's hilarious. It's a really fantastic movie um, for an old movie. It's still a classic. I watch it every year around Halloween just because. And um, so I decided to start this piece. Now, I'm stitching this on a piece of... Is it 28? I want to say it's 28 count. Oh, wait now. Look, I even have the tag here. It is. This is a DMC Charles Craft. Like, they call it Irish linen, but it's an even weave. They also call it an even weave. But there's definitely some slubs in it. So, maybe it is linen? I don't know. Like, it's really confusing. See, it says... It says Irish linen... Needlework fabric. Um, then it says even weave, 28 count Lugana. And then it says tea dyed. I guess that's the color. So I don't know why it says Irish linen if it's, I don't know, it's confusing. Anyway. Well, on the back, actually, it says 100% linen. I don't know if you can see that. No, probably not. Let's see. Nope, it's not going to focus. 100% linen. How weird is that? So anyway, now it's not going to focus again, of course. There, okay. That was entirely too much talking about this piece of fabric, but here you go. This is where I've gotten. So this is Arsenic and Old Lace. I finished Aunt Abby and I'm working on Aunt Martha. And it's 28 count, but I'm stitching it two over two. So, yeah, and it's going pretty well. I've just worked on this like a couple of couple of times. Oh, now the dogs are coming. Just one second. Okay, so now you can probably hear the dog drinking water. That's the large dog, <laughs> Lucy. So, like I said, I'm stitching this on 28 count linen or even weave, whatever they want to call it, um, two over two. And I'm only stitching on that during the, um, you know, dark 13 stitching. So the 13th of every month, I pull that out and stitch on it. Now, I also have a new start. I had resigned myself to the fact, oh my gosh, the dog is still drinking water. Lucille, Lucille, <laughs> I just let her in from outside and she's obviously very thirsty. Good girl, go lie down, go lie down. That's the big boxer and my little Margaret is, Maggie is lying over at the top of the stairs. 
not making a peep. So I wasn't going to have any new starts this year because I really wanted to focus on finishes this year and I wanted to focus on getting um, as many pieces done, but especially on finishing that Folk Witch project. I want to get that off my plate. But my daughter is doing a um, hairstyling program and that's what she decided she wanted to do as a career. So she is um, almost has a year done at school for that and she will be graduating in I'm not sure if it's May or if it's the beginning of June. So I decided I wanted to do a special little stitch for her uh, to go with her graduation present. Fingers crossed she graduates. <laughs> but she's doing really fabulous. Um, she's been cutting my hair, my mom's, my sister's, my husband's. Um, she's been taking clients down at the school salon as often as she can. Uh, she just trimmed my hair again recently. It's very blunt at the moment because she still, um, she did some of the texturizing. My hair is so, so thick and she still needs to do a bit more um, to take out the bulk, the weight of the bottom. So this is fresh out of the shower. My hair is whip straight um, and I need my roots done. But anyway, so she's going to, um, I guess, do a little more texturizing on the ends for me and do my color on my days off this week. So with that being said, I decided to purchase, this is a PDF download that I purchased. It's an Ursula Michaels chart and it's called Let's Get Styled. So it's in the shape of a hair dryer and it has the scissors and all the words are made up of um, hairstyling um, terms and prompts. So I am stitching this in the call for colors because I think my daughter's really going to love them. It's basically just four colors for the whole design. They're purples, fuchsias, and a golden yellow. And this is where I am. I'm pretty sure it's safe to show this here because she doesn't typically watch my YouTube videos. And what I did was I blocked her from being able to see my Instagram stories. So I can post pictures of this in my Instagram stories, but I haven't blocked her from my account altogether because then she would know something was up. So she can still see my regular um, photo feed. She just can't see my stories at the moment which she won't think is odd because I don't think she pays too much attention to those anyway. But that's the only place I can post project progress pictures of this because I don't want her to see it or know that I'm stitching it until it's done. So here we go. This is stitched on um, 14 count. Let's see if I can get this to focus a little better. It's 14 count white Ada. I just wanted this very simple fabric to work on. So it's just a piece of 14 count I had in my stash. And it's all a combination of back stitching and uh, stitches with some quarter stitches thrown in. And I really don't mind doing fractional stitches on Ada. Um, especially if it's a large count like this, like it doesn't bother me. So there you go. So that's where um, that's where this piece is. So I started this on February. Let's see. Can't find it now. I started this on February fourth, and I'm only working on this on my breaks at work. Um, or if it's really really slow at work in the middle of the night. Because I don't want to work on it at home, I don't want her to catch me doing it. So that is the piece I'm going to concentrate on um, for my work project until it's complete. Because I want to make sure I have that done in plenty of time. So that concludes all of my cross stitch. Um, we're about 20 minutes or so in. 
oops, my help if I put the chart back in here. I purchased this chart online. I don't know what store I bought it from. Hang on. I bought it off of crossstitch.com. And like I said, it was just a uh, it was just a, a PDF download, so and her charts are pretty reasonably priced. So there you go. That is all of the cross stitch. Now, what else did I manage to do? Well, I finished for knitting. I finished my everyday shawl. Okay, I was previously, I think the pattern was called the yoga shawl, but she changed the name of it. So I have a big finish because this is a big piece. Now, I have not sewn in the ends yet because I still have to sew on the buttons. My mom has a jar of antique buttons and well, like they're a combination of antique buttons and I guess regular buttons that she's collected over the years, odds and ends been thrown in. So she has this great big huge jar of buttons and I said I had to get 14 buttons for my shawl. And she said, oh, I wonder if I would have 14 that would match in that jar. And I said, I don't know, I need small ones because the buttonholes, if you can see, the buttonholes are tiny, right? They're just small. And she said, oh, okay, I'll have a look. Anyway, she found 14 buttons, and I think they're going to be perfect. They're like a black with a little uh, decoration on the top, and they're squared buttons. They look so. I think with the with the look of the particular button, I think it's going to go really well with the chevron border on this piece. Not that anyone's going to look at it that close, but I think it's going to look pretty good. So this is my shawl now. The ends are not sewn in, so it's all stockinette, okay, with this chevron border on the end. <clears throat> how love, look how large this is. I love it. It um, is so soft and warm. The chevron border turned out really nice with the stockinette. It's got a garter stitch edge. Yeah, I think it turned out lovely. I'm really pleased with it. Now, this can be worn just over the shoulders like this as a shawl, or the way the buttons run, there are actually buttonholes all up the outside edge on one side. And they're also all the way down the end piece. So you can actually wear this um, buttoned up and across you like a poncho. It can be worn uh, a number of different ways. Oh, okay, so hopefully I didn't lose anything. I'm gonna have to splice these two pieces together. That was my hobby calling because he knows I'm getting ready to leave for work now in about 15 minutes. So this is my shawl. I'm so pleased with it. It was a lot of work. Um, I mean, it is huge, as you can see. It was a lot of knitting, but I am so pleased with it. I am really, really pleased with it. So I'm just hoping now that I can get the buttons brought in and get them sewn on because they're at my mom's house and I should see her at some point over the next week or two. Actually, she was in last week she brought the buttons with her in her purse, and she went home with the buttons in her purse. <laughs> so, um, once I get the buttons from her, I will sew them on and sew in the few ends that I have. There aren't many. It's just from, you know, when I had to change um, from one ball of yarn to the next. So, hopefully, I will get that done, and I will be good to go, and I can wear my shawl. Okay, so that's my everyday shawl. All done. That was a huge progress, uh, sorry, a huge project. And I'm so happy that I ripped it out and restarted it. Because when I first started stitching this, I was using, I used, um, it's called Wool Like from Michaels. 
and it does feel very wool like it's super soft but because it was it's an acrylic i didn't think it would lose its shape and stretch or be weird or wonky so i knit it in that and i was it's super it's really fine yarn so what i did was i knit with it held double so i knit with two strands because when I started I was knitting with one strand and it was too light and flimsy and I didn't think I was gonna like it and um, I'm so glad that I ripped it out and restarted it holding it double stranded because I absolutely love that now it is warm and cozy so that was my big huge finish I finished that on January the 22nd I had also picked up my socks again in between because I had some doctor's appointments to go to with my mom. She's doing really well. Um, and so I had picked up my sock and I'm just doing a generic vanilla toe up sock. I wanted to try toe up design for a change instead of cuff down. So I did this neat toe where it's actually... I don't know what they call that. Do they call that a grafted toe? But there's no seam, unlike when you have a Kitchener on the toe. So there's no seam on this toe. It's It looks like it's knit right over the top of the toe. The only place you have the seam is on the edges where you're doing your increases when you're working your way, when you're working your way up the sock. Instead of doing decreases as you're working down the sock and doing a Kitchener at the end, which will give you a seam. So this I'm also knitting out of yarn that I purchased at Michael's. It is sock yarn. And then I got to this part and did the heel. But what I'm really kind of chuffed about is it's the Sweet Tomato Heel by Kat Bordy. So it is a perfectly rounded heel. Can you see that? And the way it's knit, it's done using short rows. So you end up with three wedges that make up the turn on the heel, but there's no real seam. So the heel is almost seamless and you get this nice rounded heel. And then you just continue on with the leg of the sock, which is what I am currently working on. So there you go. That is my sock with the sweet tomato heel. So Kat Bordy, um, I'll try and insert her name. It's B-O-R-D-H-I, I'm pretty sure. She has a YouTube video on her sweet tomato heel. And if I remember, I'll put a link to her video down in my description. So that was super cute. So two things I learned how to do with this sock. I learned how to do a toe up start and I learned how to do the sweet tomato heel. So I will continue knitting on this until I have enough sock to finish with my cuff. And then I will go back to start the second one. And last but not least, I did, okay, so the last thing I'm going to talk about is my um, Jessica Fletcher sweater. So in my last video, I had chatted about how um, I had gotten the entire box set of Murder She Wrote for Christmas, and I've been watching that. I'm now into, um, I guess, the first few episodes of season three. And in those shows, the character, Jessica Fletcher, who's played by Angela Lansbury, she wears a fish sweater, <laughs> for lack of a better term. And it's an old Mary Maxim sweater uh, that's knit in a, like a couch and style. And I got it in my head that I wanted a fish sweater just because I thought it was hilarious and I thought it would be a fun project and something totally off the wall to, to knit, to try and knit. So I went online and on Mary Maxim online in their vintage section, 
I found a copy of the Angler sweater. I think that's what it's called. And it's a men's pattern. The smaller sizes are kind of unisex for men, a small men's or a larger women's. And then um, there's a couple larger sizes in there as well. I bought um, yarn locally for it and I cast it on. So I'll, if I haven't done it already, insert a picture of what this sweater actually looks like that I'm talking about. Um, anyway, so here is my progress so far. Ta-da! <laughs> I am knitting this in a bulky weight yarn and I cast on the ribbing and knit that. I did the color work for the stripes in uh, fair isle knitting so there are floats along the back um, which you can see like so there are my floats so that's how i did the stripes um, this band on the side is the band that your zipper gets sewn into so as I was working my way up the panel, I had to teach myself a couple of new things that I had never done before. One of them was a pocket. So this is an inserted pocket. There's no seam of where a pocket is going to get sewn, sewn in. I actually have it safety pinned there at the moment because I didn't want the outer part of the pocket to get pulled and stretched while I was working on it. So I knit the pocket insert see if I can show that to you. This is what the pocket looks like on the inside. It's just a pocket insert and that will get stitched down on the inside of the sweater and across the bottom to create the pocket. So on the front side you have this nice clean inserted pocket. So I did that. This took me four attempts and two days to figure out how to do this properly but I finally got it done and then I started the color work for the fish the first fish and this color work is not knit in fair isle where you carry your floats this is intarsia knitting which I had never done before where you actually use you're reading a graph the same as you would be reading a cross stitch um, graph and you use just like in cross stitch you don't want to carry your yarn to your thread too far in in tarja knitting you don't want to carry floats you just want to capture the ends where the two colors join together so you knit with little bobbins so this is like a, a small bit of black that I use to knit this it's not carried from here to here on the back this is the only place the black is, then I had gray, then I had black, then I had cream. So there was cream, uh, knitting with a ball of cream yarn on this side, knitting with a separate ball of cream yarn on this side, because again, you don't want to carry your cream all the way across this big expanse and have all this mess of yarn on the back. So how that looks on the back is just like this. So you can see how your colors are captured working up as you change from one color to the next. And this took me a few days to get the hang of as well. I knit a couple of times up as far as his mouth and had to rip it out and restart it um, before I figured out how to properly get the intarsia. I've got like a little float there or something. Anyway, so yeah. So there we go. So I have the first fish done. Such a nerd. Anyway, so that is my fish sweater. Jessica Fletcher's sweater for Murder She Wrote. If you want to follow along with this project or any of my other projects, you can always follow my Instagram at Pam's Crafty Corner. I usually post daily progress on there. Um, and I usually do a video every couple of weeks to a month. You can follow me on here. So I hope everyone had a great um, remainder of January and mostly February because I can't believe we're toward the end of February now. 
and I will stop back and check in with you in a couple of weeks, I hope. Uh, show you some progress on that sweater, hopefully, and show you some progress on Folk Witch and the other pieces that I'm knitting on. I hope you have a fabulous week, and we'll chat with you again soon.